Credited as the original creator of Lemmings and Grand Theft Auto, programmer David Jones founded Real Time Worlds in 2002. The Dundee, Scotland-based studio produced Crackdown First, an open-world experience wherein players portrayed a biologically enhanced agent tasked with dismantling crime syndicates in a dystopian metropolis. Its incredible success propelled real-time worlds to greater heights, providing the cash necessary to recruit additional staff and focus on the pursuit of a far more ambitious project, the MMO that initially hit the ground running as APB All Points Bulletin. Real-time worlds touted APB as an urban MMO buttressed by the cops and robbers motif. Players could assume the role of either side of the law, wreaking havoc as criminals or towing the line as law enforcement in the name of justice. While Jones widely talked up the notion of reinventing massively multiplayer online games, the public and press could only imagine a GTA-styled MMO, giving way to misconceptions that drove unreasonably high expectations. In the end, it all came tumbling down without much notice. Five years of development, multiple rounds of funding, two publishers, and a meandering vision climaxed in one of the industry's most shocking failures. It didn't help that APB remained in production so long that it found itself competing in a market that evolved past what the project had on offer. Thus, the down-and-out MMO's chances of successfully mounting a comeback were contingent on factors well outside the realm of bug fixes and better balanced gameplay, and its eventual return failed to reignite widespread interest in the product, proving that even the best-intentioned endeavors rarely receive a second chance at a first impression. This is the tragedy of APB All Points Bulletin. Um, we, we historically are a, a, a traditional computer games developer. Speaking with VG247 in a 2008 interview, Real Time World studio manager Colin McDonald described APB as the bastard child of everything David Jones had been striving towards for nearly two decades. The studio envisioned APB as an experience that would exemplify the evolution of sandbox games from Grand Theft Auto to Crackdown, then elevate the genre further in its own unique way. Some unique qualities came courtesy of the game's status as an MMO, another space that Jones hoped to revolutionize. In conjunction with Korean publisher WebZen, Real Time Worlds announced APB in early 2005, promising an MMO wherein players the world over could assemble in hundreds of online cities, each one volatile and packed with everything from car chases and shootouts to arrests and busts. Supplying users with the ultimate freedom to do as they pleased represented APB's main premise, which appeared most evident in the emphasis on robust character customization options. Sophisticated editing tools filled out the character builder for anyone talented enough to fully realize their vision in-game. Those less skilled in the art of character creation were told not to worry, since APB would feature an auction house stocked with the creations of others. At its core, All Points Bulletin's design revolved around giving users the opportunity to define their digital identities, a concept born out of an attempt to push MMOs in a fresh new direction. David Jones elaborated on his and the team's intentions during a 2008 GDC talk, in which he lamented the close association between MMOs and role-playing games like World of Warcraft. He additionally stressed the need for MMOs to begin charting a path away from science fiction and fantasy motifs, believing it was high time someone brought the genre up to date by replacing geek with chic. The programmer argued that telescopic goggles and the word guild put modern audiences in a state of unease, which in turn created a stigma because many simply couldn't relate to the subject matter. Grinding constituted another stumbling block for the genre, given that it offered what Jones deemed as little more than a broken hook to drive hours of play. To forego typical leveling systems then, real-time worlds positioned personalization as the player's main motivation in APB, as opposed to stat-based performance increases. And while grinding still played a part in the overarching experience, the goal centered on presenting a game so fun that progressing never felt like a chore. These were the tenets upon which developers built APB over the course of approximately five years, though Real-Time Worlds and WebZen originally planned on shipping the online title in 2007. Yet the missed release schedule seemed to work out for the better. Subsequent years, 2008 in particular, proved completely transformative for APB and the Scotland headquartered studio.
By the end of 2006, Realtime Worlds had received over $30 million in capital from third-party investors. Crackdown's successful release on Xbox 360 in 2007 provided the development group with the shot in the arm it needed to begin production in earnest on APB. Early 2008 ushered in a few more victories for the crew, which secured a $50 million investment led by Maverick Capital and reacquired the rights to APB from publisher WebZen. Reclaiming the MMO's IP rights offered the group full creative control, ensuring players around the world would experience the so-called revolutionary gameplay that developers envisioned from the outset. While the project remained short on details at the time, David Jones continuously added more fuel to the increasingly high expectations. Amid news about the lucrative investment deal, the Scotsman spoke with the studio founder during an interview in which he divulged a planned 2009 global release for APB. The discussion also revealed Jones's lofty ambitions as he contemplated the money APB could generate if it obtained a level of success mirroring that of World of Warcraft. Such an outcome would in turn drive exceptional growth for the development firm. In short, Jones had his mind trained on big picture visions, a generally positive trait that some staffers saw as detrimental given the head honcho's lack of focus on what should have mattered most, building a fun game. From the outside looking in, changes related to company leadership and operations in the first half of 2009 served as another massive boon. Former Take-Two Interactive COO Gary Dale assumed Jones's previous role of Real-Time World CEO, enabling the latter to dedicate more time to his creative director duties. The studio followed up the move by inking a publishing deal with Electronic Arts in June 2009. In a statement to GamesIndustry.biz, the publisher's then-CEO, John Riccatello, cited Real-Time World's GTA and Crackdown heritage as the key reason for his pursuit of the deal. As many would later realize, heritage only meant so much in the grand scheme of things. In January 2010, Real-Time Worlds raised another $21 million in funding, bringing its cumulative total of third-party investments to more than $100 million. Throughout roughly five years of production then, the Scottish development firm had amassed quite a bit of wealth. The team wasn't anything to scoff at either. In addition to having Jones at the helm, Real-Time boasted a crew populated by talent from the likes of Sony Online Entertainment and EA Sports. The end product didn't seem to reflect as much when it finally landed, though, and the push to lift APB's review embargo on July 6, 2010, a full week after its June 29th release, indicated someone at the top had little faith in the once heavily touted MMO. Following mixed impressions from the closed and open PC betas, APB launched to predominantly poor reception. Gunplay and vehicle handling in a game sold on its shooting and driving felt clunky and unresponsive at best. Not to mention matchmaking in the online-only experience ran rampant with issues. At the very least, most agreed the studio delivered on its promise of an unparalleled character customization system. Most also concluded that APB needed extra time in the oven. Apparently, developers knew as much months before the due date. One former staffer admitted APB's design didn't receive enough attention, telling The Guardian that working with David Jones made it easy to ignore glaring issues, even when QA and beta testers gave feedback that warranted a closer look. Community officer Ben Bateman corroborated the claim in a Eurogamer interview. As a QA tester who received a promotion partway through his tenure, Bateman knew firsthand that testers often reported car handling, weapon responsiveness, and lag troubles. He couldn't pinpoint why these problems persisted throughout production, however. Other developers who spoke out anonymously painted a clearer picture about where things may have gone awry. For instance, an alleged ex-employee explained that while Jones oozed brilliance as a visionary, he believed too heavily in the notion that specific details would emerge along the way, resulting in little to no planning. Some team members substantiated such comments upon lamenting the absence of in-house discipline, a problem reportedly stemming from the millions of dollars in funding the studio secured. Supposedly, the stream of money engendered complacency to the point where managing the project became secondary, thanks to their it'll be done when it's done mentality. In analyzing APB's failure, games brief writer Nicholas Lovell noted too much money for startups often constituted a blessing and a curse. As opposed to identifying market opportunities, then focusing resources on delivering the ideal product, Smaller companies with excess funds were known to meander and experiment without much in the way of a defined direction. 
It seems this same fate befell real-time worlds, with the meandering approach even affecting the fun factor. According to a developer who said middle management merely concerned itself with ticking boxes on APB and gave little thought to user enjoyment. Consequently, many features failed to work in tandem. Studio leadership didn't handle things well in the weeks following the game's rollout either. Notably, Eurogamer conducted a post-launch interview with David Jones wherein the creative director argued that misconceptions and huge expectations fueled APB's dismal review scores. He believed the project suffered from widespread Grand Theft Auto comparisons too and bemoaned the misguided GTA MMO moniker. Other employees, however, later contended that APB's arrival with a subscription model amid an industry shift towards free-to-play represented the MMO's real killer. Either way, sales and user engagement lack momentum at launch. Based on reports suggesting the title's sales figures only numbered in the thousands during the first two months of availability. Because developers watched the player numbers rise and fall in real time, it quickly became clear to all involved that APB wouldn't generate enough revenue to prove sustainable long term. Real Time Worlds had entered its first stage of descent. Staff redundancies at the studio initially occurred around APB's launch. Real Time Worlds released contract workers early, for example, though leadership tried keeping up appearances. In a bid to obtain much needed cash, the group prematurely unveiled its secretive 3D social gaming experience, Project My World, late in July 2010, hoping to pique the interests of publishers. On August 13th, after no one had come to the rescue, the 60 or so crew members attached to Project My World were laid off. According to an insider, higher-ups admitted to previously investing the new game's budget in APB, the company's primary development focus. But not even these drastic measures were enough to ensure APB's future. Mere days after the Project My World layoffs, Real Time Worlds filed for bankruptcy and handed operations to administration firm Begbie's Trainer in another attempt to secure extra investment funds. Much of the workforce lost their jobs, while a few dozen stayed on to support APB with patches that fundamentally enhanced the game. Unfortunately, the proceedings didn't go smoothly. Former staffer Luke Hallowell penned a blog post outlining wage-related issues that hinted at a deficient contingency plan. Hollowell claimed workers were still owed the previous month's payment and knew nothing about how the studio would handle redundancy pay and unused holidays. An update to the post several days later divulged ex-employees had at that point received two days pay. It was a bad look for a company that otherwise treated its staff well. The other shoe dropped a handful of weeks later. Though hundreds of external parties reportedly expressed interest, Epic Games included, None wanted to foot the bill for an experience that required live operations. Thus, on September 23, 2010, 86 days after its PC release, APB shut down. Real Time Worlds and its Colorado based satellite studio closed their doors shortly thereafter. APB eventually found a new home in K2 Network, the licensor and publisher behind Night Online and War Rock, which acquired the MMO's rights for approximately £1.5 million in November 2010. The gamer's first published experience relaunched the following year as APB Reloaded, under the stewardship of Reloaded Productions, and bore a new coat of paint to boot, foregoing retail and subscription models in favor of free-to-play. David Jones returned in an advisory capacity, again touting the title as one that would truly break new ground for online games. It didn't set the world on fire, but survived long enough in its second phase to receive PS4 and Xbox One ports, courtesy of publisher Deep Silver, and development efforts by The Workshop Entertainment and Reloaded Games. Interestingly, the brand may continue to evolve, evidenced by Hong Kong company Unit Games' purchase of the APB property in 2019. The company's specific intentions remain under lock and key, yet a blog post announcing the news hinted at the prospects of a mobile version and further expansion into Asian markets. Over a decade after its disastrous release then, APB lives on. So perhaps the tragedy surrounding APB isn't about the MMO at all. As one developer put it, amid real-time world's layoffs, the real tragedy rests in that so many people spent years of their lives pouring every ounce of passion they could muster into a project they all too quickly had to abandon in a fraction of the time. Thank you for watching. 
We'd like to take this time to thank, by name, the generous patrons who have pledged to our Hall of Fame reward tier. Alex Moretti and those currently subscribed to our producer reward tier. Darirap Sigurdsson GetWrecked.com Landy K. Hayes Milkshake If you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to our channel and backing us on Patreon.